Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. Omani rare pictures and documents are showcased at the International Conference of Islamic Civilization and Culture and Omani role in the African Great Lakes countries in Burundi. After a wide participation of Arab and Omani poets, activities of the 9th Omani Poetry Festival are concluded in the Wilayat of Nizwa. Daughters of Oman Project is opened in the Wilayat of Taqa for dairy products manufacturing and tailoring. Those are the headlines and now the news in detail. The documentary exhibition at the International Conference of Islamic Civilization and Culture and Omani Role in the African Great Lakes countries in Burundi displayed Omani historical pictures and documents reflecting Omani presence in the African countries in the past. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed Arubai. The international conference held here in Bujumbura, Burundi, continued its activities with the historians, writers and experts presented their papers that reflected the Sultanate experience in the field of religion, tolerance and freedom, history, heritage and geography, and economic development, as well as competitive ages and deep civilized aspects of Oman. Each session witnessed intense discussion, and the people here praised the Sultanate ancient traditional and cultural legacy and its relationship with African countries. Regarding the relationship between Omanis and uh, Burundian Muslims and Christians, Bishop uh, of Anglican Church in Bujibura said, At this uh, special occasion, uh, at this uh, international conference uh, in Burundi, we are very pleased to, to have this uh, conference and uh, we, we are pleased to have a good relationship with Oman people. The role of Omanis uh, we really appreciate because they introduced Islam to Burundi peacefully. On the importance of the conference, Professor Timothy from Manchester University said... Well, I think it's a very good idea and it's building upon the conference that was held in Zanzibar last year. And what's important about it is bringing the perspective of the interior of Africa and Omani links with the interior of Africa and not just the coast because people only think of the coast usually, and that was covered last year. I also think it's important because it's um, bringing together Omanis, people from many African nations, and also a few Europeans. And what's nice, it's not a European-run event as well. So it's, it's bringing together different perspectives, as scholarship and academia should be. A Grand Mufti of Uganda talked about the role of Omanis in Africa, and he said... Uh, this has been a very wonderful and a colour uh, colourful event, uh, which was organised by our brothers from the Sultan of Oman and uh, the, the government of the Republic of Burundi. It, was, it has been successful in it is rem reminding us of our past, of the presence of the uh, Oman Empire in the Great Lakes region. And they have brought here the archives and the documents and the writings which remind us the role they played in uplifting the standards of the people of this region. And at, at the same time, is spreading the word of Islam, the word of Allah in this region. On the sideline of the conference, an exhibition is set up. This exhibition includes uh, documents that highlight the relations uh, that link Oman with other states, such as Britain, France, Germany, USA, Russia, and other states in various political, trade, and economic fields. This happiness of the Burundian people and the hospitality received here in this National Conference reflects the positive coexistence, good treatment and good morals that the Omani citizens displays wherever they go. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rubai, Sultanate of Oman Television, Bujumbura, Burundi. After the participation of poets representing numerous Arab countries, activities of the 9th Oman Poetry Festival held in the Wilayat of Nizwa was concluded. It included various presentations of poems of classical and traditional types after five days of activities and at the end of the ceremony the participants sponsoring and supporting bodies were honored.
In continuation of the 44th Glorious National Day celebrations, citizens of the Wilayat of Barka organized a camel race. It included 10 rounds of 1,200 meters, witnessing great competition, which indicated, indicated the care and attention enjoyed by this traditional sport. It was held under the auspices of His Excellency, Said Suleiman bin Hamoud al Busaidi, Deputy Secretary General of the Council of Ministers. At the end, the toppers, supporters, sponsors, and organizers were honored. A ceremony was held in the Wilayat of Taqa in the Governorate of Lofar to open Daughters of Oman project for manufacturing dairy and its products, as well as tailoring field. It aims to support Omani women to benefit from her home-made projects and economic status. It was presided over by His Excellency, Dr. Ahmed bin Nasser al-Bakri, and the Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries Wealth. It is supported by uh, Petroleum Development of Oman and cooperation with the Omani Women's Association of the Wilayat of Taqa. It also aims to highlight the importance to follow the healthy conditions in manufacturing dairy and different ways of tailoring. A workshop was held on social investment program of entrepreneurship projects, education causes and sustainable energy for entrepreneurs at Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industry branch in the Wilayat of Niswa in the Governorate of Dakhiliya. It was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Khalifa bin Hamad Asadi, Governor of Dakhiliya. It introduced to entrepreneurs and owners of small and medium enterprise development fund for youth projects its role to support the youth and benefit uh, from it. It also highlighted financial, economy, uh, technical, marketing, administrative and organizational expertise to enter entrepreneurship and uh, owning small and medium sized enterprises to employ the Omani youth in various sectors. Central Camera News Bulletin. The Liberian traditional handshake is lost to the Ebola outbreak. Welcome back to the news from the Sultan of Oman Television. Several Western states pledged to back a UN nuclear agency request for 5.7 million US dollars as soon as possible to pay for its monitoring of an ex extended interim nuclear deal between Iran and world powers. Meanwhile, Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister said that Tehran will resume its nuclear talks with big powers in Geneva on Wednesday. Abbas Arti said negotiations were preceded by bilateral talks at the level of deputy ministers, Iran and six countries plus Germany, decided to extend their talks at the 1st of July next year after they could not reach a final settlement towards Iranian nuclear program in its latest round in Vienna. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov reiterated Moscow's calls to convene as soon as possible another round of peace talks on the conflict in East Ukraine's Donbass region. Meanwhile, two civilians were hit by intermittent bullets that targeted the positions of Ukrainian army in Donetsk and some villages in spite of troops uh, since Tuesday. Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko uh, praised earlier an effective ceasefire after 24 hours during which no breach was recorded for the first time in seven months. But he admitted that the situation is fragile. Mm -hmm. 
The military attaché at the Sultan's uh, embassy in Egypt hosted a reception on the occasion of the Sultan's Armed Forces Day in the presence of His Excellency Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali al Harthi, Sult Sultan's ambassador to Egypt and his permanent representative to the Arab League. The ceremony was attended by a number of senior Egyptian officials from military, journalism and media, as well as members of diplomatic missions and Omani citizens. The military attaché at the Sultan's embassy in France also hosted a reception on the occasion of the Sultan's Armed Forces Day, SAF. The ceremony was attended by a number of senior French officials from military, journalism and media, as well as members of diplomatic missions of brotherly and friendly countries and Omani citizens. During the ceremony, a briefing of SAF achievements was displayed. An exhibition displaying historical items and traditional crafts was held in the wilayat of Deba at the governorate of Musandam. It aimed to acquaint the new generation with the deep-rooted Omani heritage. The exhibition included sections for traditional weapons, coins, a number of pots which were used for cooking, storage and carrying food in addition to items of daily life usage. Some visitors of the exhibition expressed that such events helped to introduce members of the society to the history and culture of the Wilaya and encourage the youth to learn more about the Omani heritage. Mm -hmm. A fine arts workshop was held in the Wilaya of Nizwa. It came to train the fine arts teachers at the schools of the Governorate of Dakhiliya in making ceramics. It was organized by the Director General of Education in the governorate in cooperation with the University of Nizwa. Around 60 teachers participated in the workshop and they were trained to make various shapes and decorations with clay. The participants expressed that the workshop was very beneficial and it will help the fine art students to enhance their skills in this field. The Maimuna bin Harith School in the Wilayat of Buremi organized a number of sports, artistic and technological activities for students. The aim was to enhance the knowledge and skills of students in various fields. The event included scout shows, heritage village, in addition to sections for health, radio and computers. It also included scientific, artistic and other workshops as well as some traditional dances performed by the students. Mm -hmm. The Ba'd village in the Wilayat of Mulebi is located in a mountainous area surrounded by greenery and palm trees in addition to beautiful fallages. The village has a number of old buildings with decorated wooden doors that came to narrate the tale of old Omani architecture and its deep-rooted history. On the mountains, the visitors can notice magnificent view of old forts that add further joy and peace to the mind. More than 6,400 people have now died from Ebola in the three hardest hit nations in West Africa. But the outbreak has also had an impact on the region's way of life, especially their traditional greetings. More details in the following report. The Liberian handshake with its customary flourish and finger snap is today an endangered species. The everyday greeting has become another victim of the Ebola virus that's devastated parts of West Africa. As people go to lengths to avoid bodily contact, the handshake is fast disappearing, much to the regret of some. To shake hands has been a culture in Liberia, right? We shake hands, you know, we snap fingers, you know. This is our culture. And I think in West Africa, we shake hands more than any other country in West Africa, if not Africa, you know, at large. Ebola is transmitted through contact with the bodily fluids of someone infected with the virus. On the streets of the Liberian capital, Monrovia, the handshake is steadily being replaced. Uh, we are doing the handshake, but we have different method of handshake right now. You see, we just boss each other 
as a friend. And when you boss anybody from Liberia, a person knows that his handshake because of Ebola. The theory goes that if you knock elbows whilst wearing long sleeves, then you cancel out the risk of transmission. In neighboring Sierra Leone, also hard hit by the Ebola epidemic, some village chiefs have gone one step further by imposing fines on those caught shaking hands. Whenever you touch, for sure you will die. So we don't do that anymore. And whenever, in my own chiefdom, whenever you shook hand with someone, uh, you have a fine of 500,000 leons. That's a fine of around $100 for a handshake in a country where the average salary is around $48 per month. With over 6,000 people killed by the Ebola virus, most across West Africa know that dropping the handshake is a small price to pay for limiting its spread any further. A major storm that permeated Northern California and the Pacific Northwest with heavy rains and high winds and killed two people moved south overnight, prompting evacuation orders in areas prone to floods and mud flows. The National Weather Service forecast the system to track through southwestern California, bringing the possibility of strong thunderstorms as well as water, sports, uh, water spouts and small tornadoes along the coast. As the storm loomed, officials in Los Angeles, a suburb of Glendora, issued a mandatory evacuation order in the area. The Riverside County uh, Sheriff's Department also ordered some residents uh, in San Jacinto, which saw mud flows during a large storm last week that damaged homes and vehicles to evacuate. The system drenched Northern California, flooding some streets and intersections in San Francisco uh, area. Many local schools were closed. The city saw about 3.4 inches of rain and some 240 commercial flights were canceled at San Francisco International Airport. The harsh weather also hit Washington's estate, where over 165,000 customers were without power. And now for the new weather forecast, uh, clear skies will prevail over the Salted with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over parts of the governorates of North and South Yorkia and Worcester. Winds will be northeasterly light to moderate along the southeastern coast and along the rest of the Salted it will be northwesterly light to moderate. Seas will be moderate along the southeastern coast with a maximum wave height of 2 meters. Along the rest of the coast, it will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Salted of Oman Television. Before we enter tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Omani rare pictures and documents are showcased at the International Conference of Islamic Civilization and Culture and Omani role in the African Great Lakes countries in Burundi. After wide participation of Arab and Omani poets activities of the 9th Omani Poetry Festival are concluded in the Wilayat of Niswa. And project of Daughters of Oman is opened in the Wilayat of Taha for dairy products, manufacturing and tailoring. And with that, we come to the end of tonight's News Bulletin. From all of us here in the newsroom and the studios, it's good night and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye.